Our Father and our God, we say thank you. Daddy, we bless your name. We worship and we adore you. You are a good God, a just God, a merciful God, a loving God, a faithful God. Our help in time of need, our shield, our buckler. The God that has good thought for us. He said, I know the thought that I have towards you, my children. They are the thought of peace and not of evil to give you an expected hand. Thank you for always being there for us. Daddy, we are grateful. Lord, if we have 10,000 of tongues, it would not be enough to thank you for all that you have done for us individually, as families, and as a church. We are grateful to you. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. As we look into your word, the perfect law of liberty, we ask that your word will set us free. In the name of Jesus, it will draw to us this morning. And as we behold, any area we need to make amendment will receive grace from your throne in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we ask that you will have your way. In our midst today, you will do that which eyes have not seen. You will do that which ears have not heard. That which has not entered even into the heart of men, you will do for us in the name of Jesus. And Satan will command you in the name that is above every other name. For it is written that God has highly exalted that name, the name of Jesus. That the mention of the name of Jesus, everything in heaven on earth and underneath the hell should bow. We command you to bow in the name of Jesus. We ask that the word of God will go out without hindrance, without limitations and barriers in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. Honor and glory we give to your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Our topic this morning is enjoying open doors. Enjoying open doors. It is the will and the delight of our Father, our Maker, our Redeemer, for us His children to always enjoy open doors. Considering this is the month of our says granted. Praise the Lord. And every time, God is always granting his children access. That's the truth. Because there's nothing God will, you know, be benefit from keeping us in pain or restricting us from moving forward. But what does Revelation 3.7 says? And I read... And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, This thing say, he that is holy, he that is true, he that had the key of David, he that opened it, and no man shut it, and shut it, and no man opened it. So if God is always opening doors for us, so where is that barrier from? Where is that limitation from? And let's look at what 1 Corinthians 16.9 says. For a great door, not just great, an effectual, is open unto me and unto you. But there are many adversaries. Praise the Lord. So the, the reason why we are not enjoying these open doors, when there is limitation and barrier, is because of who? The adversaries. And today, God will grant you an high over any adversary that is standing before our doors in the name of Jesus. You can imagine a physical, let's, let's uh, use a physical illustration now. That you, you have a lot of blessings in here. Maybe a party is going on. And you have been invited by the Lord of hosts to come in. And you have what it takes because you are a child of God. And then the door is wide open. But there is a giant that is standing by the door and is staring at you and saying, you can't enter. Praise the Lord. 
And in the realm of the spirit, that is how it is every now and then. Not that God is not sufficient to bless his children, but there is just that adversary that is just standing and saying, no, you can't go this far. Such limitations, such adversary will be brought under our feet in the name of Jesus. And I will tell you what that happened to me. Over 15 years ago, God told me that this job is coming. I was working in the organization as a contract staff. He told me the job. He told me the grade to tell you how far God went with me on that job. And I was looking forward to that job. I was hoping, I was trusting God. But the adversary came in the dream. And do you know that ignorance did not even let me link the two? Because as far as I'm concerned, God has told me and I was waiting for it. I just saw myself. I was working in my office. Another colleague who is a contrast staff just came in. And out of my being polite and everything, you know what I did? I stood up and I gave her the seat to sit. And I woke up. I didn't have as much as spiritual understanding as I do now. And then I woke up. I said, what type of this? I, maybe because, you know, you are nice. Maybe, you know, I didn't take it. Of course, I pray, but not in the place of warfare. And the opening came. They advertised it. And I applied and the devil managed during the period that, you know, I went on vacation. And normally, once they shortlist you, they will always reach you to come for the interview. But they didn't even invite me for the interview. And it was the day the interview was held. If, it was, if, if I had a notice a day before, I would have gotten that job. But it was the day after the interview had taken place. Somebody just called me and said, Auntie Adun, uh, this uh, job they advertised, they did, did the interview today. And... Lo and below, Holy Spirit just opened my eyes that what has happened. And by the time the person that got the job, it was this individual that I gave my seat to. Praise the Lord. Will you, was it God's fault? And when she, she got that employment, it was that grade that God revealed to me that they started her home. Praise the Lord. So it's important that we understand that spiritual warfare is what? It's real. It's real. And you don't want to joke. You know, you don't want to joke with it. But I received God's mercy. Three years plus down the line, God brought another one for me. Praise the Lord. So is there anything that you have lost as a result of the adversary on your path? Today, the God of heaven, as you are anointed and you cry out to God, something will happen in the name of Jesus. I haven't learned from that. There was another one that happened to me. I was giving a message like this to preach in my former parish, and it was a thought of warfare. And so whether you are the one preaching, it, would, it doesn't even matter. You, my, my, my purpose is that even me will be, you know, blessed as everybody here is what? Is blessed. So when it's time to pray, please pray, because I will also do a drop and pray. That was how we prayed about spiritual warfare. And the last promotion that I got came as a result of that Thursday warfare. On Thursday, we prayed. By Friday, I went to the office. I left my building to another building. And my manager called me. I said, I don't come to my office. I followed him. He said, but why did your boss not present you for promotion? Because they have already done the um, ranking. And I was not promoted. He said, why did he not? I said, oh, God, you know I was not at the ranking. I really don't know. So he started asking me, this rig project, who did it? That one. I said, it's me, sir. Because the person that was doing it retired. And before they found the person that would take over, they added it to my portfolio. And that was how he said, just go and send to me everything that you have done. My manager went into the GM's office. And that was how my name came out. So I can tell you that spiritual warfare is what? It's real. But for God's intervention, I would have lost that promotion that year. It's possible that following year, I will get it. But is it the same? My years of service has been shortened by three years plus. Praise the Lord. So God is always opening doors. But there is this adversary that would not let us be. But God will crush him today in the name of Jesus. It is important to know that God delights in our prosperity. He delights in our well-being, both physical well-being and spiritual well-being. According to 3 John 1, to be loved, I wish above all things, that that way prosper and be in what? Even as I saw, 
So is it every child of God that is in health? Eh? In good health. Why? The adversary. Who? The adversary. So, I mean, this, this, this our work with God is not bread and butter. You and I, we need to fight the good fight of what? Of faith. In order for us to fulfill our destiny in Christ Jesus. To enjoy open door, you have a part to play. You do what? You have a part. It's a co-shared responsibility with God. It's just like a father. You've paid for your child's school fees. You've taken the child to go and do lesson or to go to school. You've done everything. Are you going to be in the class to receive lecture for that child? Are you going to write exam for that child? So God is always constant with his own. He will always pay his, his path. So it's for you and I to do what? Pay our own part. No wonder Matthew eleven twelve 12 says, and from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violence shall take it by what? So not bread and butter Christianity if you really want to fulfill destiny and you want to go far with God. When I read about the men of God and the exploit they are doing, it, it doesn't just come automatic. Praise the Lord. It is in the place of deep prayer and studying of the word of God and spiritual exercise. So brethren, we need to wake up. What did I say we need to do? We need to wake up. When Peter couldn't catch fish all night, Jesus still said, trust how your word, your net. Would he have been able to catch any fish if he just held his net? No. So this morning, in the place of prayer, you will trust out your words, your net, and there will be net-breaking catches of fishes today in the mighty name of Jesus. And the beauty of it is, in Psalm 25, verse 5, it talks about God preparing a table for us in the presence of our enemies. Praise the Lord. So what do you and I need to enjoy? Open doors. So that bouncer is standing by the door, even though the door is opened. But he's saying you can't go in. And physically you can't match him. You look at the description of David and Goliath. Was there any way David would have been able to overpower Goliath? He wouldn't have been able to. So in the physical, what I will do is, the one who has called for the banquet, the one who has brought so much gift into the hall and, you know, has beckoned unto me to come, what will I do? I will call him. Praise the Lord. I will call him because I'm his, I'm his guest. So you will call God in the place of prayer this morning and he will surely answer you in the name of Jesus so the first thing you need to do is repentance. So if you are here, you are not a child of God. I beg of you. So that you don't go back to your maker and end up in the other side. Come, come, come forward today and surrender. You are not losing anything. It is when you are the other side, you think you are losing so much. But by the time you come inside and you compare the two lives, you can tell yourself that you have missed. Praise the Lord. No wonder the songwriter, even the moment, I don't know whether I was that, you know, he enjoyed the presence of God. The rest, even though he was dying, he wrote in bitterness, that, will I go and empty handed and meet my Savior soul, not even with one soul to reach him. Praise the Lord. That is somebody that just encountered God on his dying bed. The peace that he enjoyed for those moments, he regretted. So I don't want you to regret because you are not losing anything. Praise the Lord. You're not losing anything. The peace that you have in God, money cannot buy it. Praise the Lord. And don't envy people at the other side because what you have, they don't have. The assurance that you have your tomorrow will be better than today, they don't. 
And that is why they are always running from pillar to post. Romans 6, 1, shall we continue then in sin that grace may abound? No. Isaiah 59 verse 1 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Neither is he heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear you. So even though you are there, you don't have access to the one that has called for the open doors, for the blessings, for the, all the goodies. And the only way you can reach him now is in repentance. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heaven laden. I will do what? I will give you peace. Rest. He will give you rest. He will give you peace. Today is the day of salvation for somebody here. Praise the Lord. It doesn't matter. You may be coming to church. You may even be a worker. All that is what is tied to. You know whether you are there. And peradventure, you are a child of God. You are falling. Thank God for God of second chance. He gave me second chance. Praise the Lord. If he has not done it, do you think I will be bold and stand here and say, hey, I gave somebody my seat? Will I be able to say it? I won't be. So no matter what it is today, you will tell a better story tomorrow in the name of Jesus. And another thing that we should do as God's children is when we are coming to God, please let us come boldly, not with timidity. Let us not be afraid. And this thing, God has used my children to teach me boldness in relating with God. I have one. She will have a need, but she won't say it. She will be managing. And by the grace of God, the things she has, you know, that she needs, there are things that I can afford by the grace. So I really don't know why she is feeling for me. Every time she says, but my mom, uh, mom, I'm feeling now. I say, but do you know that your sister, there is nothing that one will know. Even after collecting the normal, what we could give them every month, pocket money, they are both in the university. If she has extra thing to still do, she will still ask me. And the way she will ask you, you don't have any option because she's a girl and I, you really don't want girls to start, do you understand, having unnecessary need. So sometimes when I ask her, but you've collected, I say, mommy, no, the, how much they make here, here is so expensive, oh. After you've given somebody pocket money, you will still pay for the hair that she will make. And not just the hair. What she will use to do the hair, she will calculate it for you. Then she has a school uh, dinner to attend. And then she has gone to store. And she has given me... I, one time she gave me a list. Even the dress that she, the, she wanted to buy, even me, the mother, I've never bought that quality of dress before. But by the time she told me, ah, you know, every dress I saw on that thing, is that the back is showing the hand. This is about it. I was forced to give her because she sent me the picture and it's really, do you understand? So when you are coming to God today, don't come like the other one. So I have used this other one to speak. I said, ah, you are shortchanging yourself because your sister is always asking. And I am always, so I started, I said, this one I gave her. She said, ma, you get, I said, yes, I did. Because she asked. You, you are girls. If, God, if I have it, it's not like I'm going to go and but why won't I give you? So now she's also trying to come up, but she's not yet there. Praise the Lord. So this morning, how should you come to your father? Boldly. What favor are you doing him to ask him for something that he has? <clears throat> and today you and I will exercise our faith. If you look at Hebrews, Hebrews 4, 16, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Praise the Lord. Come boldly and don't shortchange yourself. The third thing we need to do Let's exercise our faith. Let's do what? Exercise our faith. James 2.18 says, A man may say, 
Thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. And I will show thee my faith by my works. So by the things that we will get in the presence of God today, we will be able to show what? That we have faith in God. By the quality of the things that you will ask from God today. Eh? As if God is, you know, he doesn't have enough. So let me allow him to, let me help him to manage. No. The thousands upon the hills, they, they are where? Our God is rich. So as a child of God, we don't have any business to be, you know, to be, to be poor. And the last one, because of our time, resisting and contending with the adversary in the place of prayer. First Thessalonians 2, 18, Wherefore we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Today that entrance will be lifted up in the name of Jesus. Deuteronomy 2, 24 says, Rise ye up, take your journey and pass over the river Anon. Behold, I have given it into your hand. Sihon the Amorite, king of Eshbon, and his land, begin to possess it and contend with him in, in battle. Even in the Old Testament. Contend with what? So, your husband, your children, your career, your health, whatever it is in the place of prayer, what should you do? Contend. Contend. Praise the Lord. Can we be on our feet? I don't want to take so that we'll be able to, you know, take one or two prayers. You have heard that God is interested in blessing you and in blessing me. But the adversary is at the door. So we want to open our mouth and come against. And you know, let's imagine that the adversary is by the door. And he's big there and you are there and you need to come in. Psalm 24 verse 7 answered what will happen. He said, lift up your head, O ye gates. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting. So you need to open your mouth this morning and cry unto your father and say, Father, every ancient gate, every ancient door be lifted in the name of Jesus. Father, Every ancient gate, every ancient door that is standing between me and my blessings, my promotion, my peace, my joy, my marriage, in the name of Jesus, be lifted up. I command you, be lifted up, my liver, son, taliba. Shanda libo yim zonka libo yim zonka liba zonka libo yim zonka liba yim zonka liba liba zonka libo yim zonka libo yim zonka libo liba zonka libo yim zonka libo ya every Asian gate every Asian door two doors of backwardness two doors that you have been raised and walking in my life I command you to be lifted. In the name of Jesus, Lima Sonda Liba Yam Zonka Libo Yim Sonda Lima Zonka Libo. Open your mouth and ask the King of Glory to come in. King of Glory, Mong and mighty in battle, the man of war, the ancient of this, oh, the bright and the morning star, the one that has not lost any battle. Come in in the name of Jesus. Come in, Limo Sonda. Let every adversary standing before me, before my jaw, be lifted in the name of Jesus. Be lifted, be lifted, be lifted. Lima Santa, Liba Yim Zonda. Liba Santa, Lebo Yim Zinki Bayi. Masanda, Liba Yim Zonka Liba. Sonda, Libo Robo Sonda.
In that name that is above every other name, you Asian doors standing before my promotion. Enough is enough. Be removed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Just one more prayer. I don't know what is that thing. But you will call that thing and say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. The body of Moses was being contended with. And what answered to the release in, in the book of Jude, chapter 1, you know it has only one, is as Satan, the Lord rebuke you. So you open your mouth and say, Satan, I don't know what you want to rebuke the Lord over. Is it your business? Is it your fruitfulness? Is it your home? Is it your children? Is it your career? Whatever it is, just open your mouth and say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you over whatever it is. Leave that In the name of Jesus, Rese te ke kura gazanda la basita yen, rete ko sakete kalibra zonde revo saleri yen, mera bara sada gade ka kura gazanda ya, rete ku zalaga de ka kura gazente, e revo rosodo gade ke te ke kura gazande revo siyan, e na bara sada gade ke te ke kura gazente, mera bara sada gada kalibro zuta yanda, command him to get his hands off. Mera bo rase kali gagora bazanta yand, era bo sate keli brasonda ra bazire di yand, ne rebo sadaga de kakora gazire di yand, resato la keta kazire di yand. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Well, this is your prayer point after you are anointed, and that's where we we'll take. You are going to cry out to the Almighty. With that, anointing takes you beyond boundaries. Once you are anointed, you never remain at the same place again. It is error for you to remain at the same place after this anointing. So when you are anointed, you will pray as you move and say every boundary that the enemy has set against me. Maybe at your work, your office, you can't pass this, you can't pass that. I cross it today. By the power of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, I cross it. Every boundary, that's going to be your prayer as soon as you are anointed. Choir sing solemnly. I would actually ask you to pray too, because you need to cross some boundaries. Amen. So, maybe uh, instrumentalists just do the instruments. Okay? Uh, just play Baba Fabara. Stay at that one. You people pray. Okay? So, as soon as you're anointed, you can come to the altar and pray. You can go back to your seat, but pray. Father, every boundary that the enemy has set against my life, today I cross it in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost, let that be your prayer. Let that be your prayer in the name of Jesus. Let that be your prayer. Pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God Almighty. Every boundary, it may be in the office, it may be your business, it may even be you looking for a job and that job has not come. It may be your health that they have said you can do this, but you can't do this. There is a boundary. I cross it today by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. The anointing signifies the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. I cross that boundary. Every limitation. Refuse to remain at the same place in the name of Jesus. Every boundary, 
every limitation, every barricade that the enemy has put on my path, every limitation I cross today by the power of the anointing in the name of Jesus. It may be a limitation that you can never travel out of this country. You can never go out of this country. Cross that limitation today by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Reketo gazeka kura gazantaya. Repala sata kada gazide diande. Reteke zelika koda gazanta. In the name of Jesus. Reseteke koda basira kalande lebo sida kada. Melabora sata yanda. As soon as David was anointed, something happened that made a way for him in the palace. He could no longer remain in the wilderness. The palace had to give way. The gates of the palace had to make way for him. He may be a financial barrier. You can never become this. You can have this much, but you will continue to struggle. You will cross it today. By the power of the Holy Ghost, every barrier, every limitation that has been set over my, my life, over my finances, over my education, over my job, over my position, my promotion, I cross this morning in the name of Jesus. I cross it this morning. It will not hold back my children. It may have held back generations before me, but no more. No more. We are crossing it. We are crossing it by the power of the Holy Ghost. For it's not by might, it's not by power, but by the Spirit of God. We are crossing over today in the name of Jesus. We are crossing over those boundaries in the power of the Holy Ghost. In the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so, Father, we thank you. Thank you, God Almighty, because the anointing will never leave a man the same place where he met him. Thank you because, thank you Lord, because we are not going to be at the same place where this anointing encountered us. We are moving to greater heights, greater levels, crossing boundaries, crossing limitations, moving over embargoes in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. We believe and receive it so. And we thank you because we step out in faith today and we believe it is done. We will return to give you the glory, to give you the honor, to give you the praise. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Say better amen. 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 God bless you. Congratulations.